morning all welcome to the thai sustainability summit the largest summit hosted by thai hyderabad we have over 40000 registrations and uh, growing and jt rao founder of vinemar i am excited to introduce the topic to the screen today the circular economy a trillion dollar opportunity in today's world this is a compelling topic and needs rightful attention i'm glad to introduce the speaker mr abhay desh pande for the audience mr abhay desh pande is a serial entrepreneur with 18 plus years of experience he is a founder of uh, mart jack he holds uh, the unique distinction of building a largest digital commerce uh, platform of the country without uh, vcr pe investment so he has won several awards in the past few years and uh, yeah so dear abai glad to have you here please take over from here thanks mr rao uh, for the kind introduction uh, i would like to thank thai hyderabad for inviting me for such a prestigious event uh, the topic which is given to me is about circular economy i think which is a need of power and the next couple of years will be i feel that there will be a lot of focus and we are forced to be focused on this topic so i have some few slides which i have prepared so i would request uh, akansha to uh, run them and i will so uh, circular economy what i am going to cover today is the opportunities challenges and size of the in industry uh, just a bit correction in what jt rao has said i was a founder of martjack which was a b2b e-commerce platform uh, saas based company after exiting martjack i started my startup called recycle which is a digital platform for waste commerce and this is the first waste commerce company where uh, all the generators bulk generators small uh, aggregators kawadi walas all of them can sell the waste to the to the uh, registered recyclers through our platform uh next slide akansha so i think uh, uh, first we'll try to cover wh why there is a need of a circularity and uh, in the in today's world so many of you must have uh, uh, seen the ipcc's uh, latest report on code red on for humanity and if you see that the kind of uh, human has become a single most influential species on the planet and uh, uh, with the carbon dioxide emission global warming ocean attribution habitat destruction all those things if you look at i think uh, the need of the hour is is circularity and i think how do we achieve it how big that opportunity is what need to change we'll try to cover to cover in this aspect, aspect. the other thing which is happening is that there is an increase of demand so i think uh, uh, even the consumption power of the consumers is growing even existing consumers are consuming more and in next uh, 20 years we are going to say three more three billion new customers coming in the market either because of their age or because of their income level going going up and uh, they and out all this 3 billion coming in the demand of the products and services will be much more much much more than what it is it is today the third aspect of the circularity why it is needed is the price sensitivity if you look at the e-commerce the way the e-commerce has disrupted the market is it has de de uh, it has basically given more choices to the consumers and the price and it's lead to the price sensitivity so this low brand uh, uh, commitment or loyalty there so people are like for the price lowest price or cheapest price people are getting the good products and they are buying buying those products so so the people spending money uh, extra money uh, for the product which are environmentally or socially favorable is something difficult to happen so this need a mindset change completely so if you look at the broad three points these are the three aspects of why we need circularity in today's today's world next slide Attention, next slide. 
So I think there are three key principles of the circular economy, which I would like to talk about um, briefly here, and then I will cover them in detail in the next few slides, is eliminate the waste and pollution. So I think this has to happen at the product designing stage itself. So the whole the design has to be planned in such a way that there is a minimum waste generation out of that when it reaches the end of life. Second aspect is circulate products and materials. So I think the, the product should be used multiple times. It should be circulated. It should come back to the economy again, get recycled or refurbished or reused the way it is possible. And third important aspect of the circular economy is regenerate nature. So I think if we really look at the broader three principles of circular economy, I will try to cover them in, under these three aspects. Next slide. So now if you look at uh, look at the aspect of the how the closed loop life cycle uh, is working and I'm trying to explain the various stages of the product life cycle here from the product design stage to the product usage stage. Now, if you look at the first part of it, let's look at the first or most crucial stage, which is product design and how designing with purpose can solve various challenges posed by the stakeholders in the course of product lifetime. So the first one is design for trust, right? We need to design the product which, has, which can build trust among the user and keep in mind how the consumer interacts with the product during the use. So we need to make, make that, bring that, uh, uh, attachment and trust with the product for the consumer. Uh, that is very, very important aspect. Second aspect, while well, at the designing stage of the product is designed for durability. So longevity of the product is essence. Designers should also be aware of building the products which are like, great example I can give you is the water resistant smartphones. The feature has actually got adopted, provided additional security and peace in the mind for the consumer and naturally uh, making the smartphone more resilient and increase the product lifetime because of one feature which came in. Second is design for standardization and compatibility. That is a third point which all the product designers should keep in mind so that the components and the parts used are interchangeable and modular and that brings the extra life for the product. product. The fourth one is design for upgradable and adaptability. So this Fourth point, which the designer should keep in mind, this can help to adapt the product to the change need of the consumer. But the consumer needs are changing. So if the product has a adaptability and upgradability naturally inbuilt at the design stage itself, the consumer will use the product for a longer period. And design for the dis as well as reassemble. So make the device easier to refurbish. So that, that helps basically to uh, use the device for a longer period or then get refurbished, repair, or if required, recycle also at the last stage. So this was the particular part which the user should keep in mind while designing the product uh, from the circularity perspective. Once the product is designed and to be refurbished or recycled at the end of the use and end of the life, the subsequent loops, if you see on my on the screen, are comes in picture. The first one is the user at the top of the right side of the top side is uh, the first is repair, right? The repair is possible at users with shortest loop for extending the product life. So for example, I use something and if I have a, uh, the network and the infrastructure available, we can repair and use it, use it again. That is the first loop which, which, which can be created. The second one is uh, a stage of reuse. So second loop, which we, we see on the presentation is the, uh, is the reuse stage where the, where we are seeing that tremendous surge in the pre-owned smartphone and smartphone actually has shown us the way that it is possible. Okay? People are reusing the smartphones, but the same philosophy can be applied for other products. also. why not apparels? Why not uh, the TVs? Why not the other products? So I think we need to reuse and resale is going to be the one of the major driver from the circular economy perspective. And that is another loop, which we need to focus on. Next in the line is the refurbishing loop. So I think refurbishing is something which uh, is a great way to recover lost value and extend the product life. I think refurbishing, uh, remanufacturing helps to establish the closed loop at the product and the component level itself. Thus extending the product life while delivering value to the different set of consumers. After refurbishing, it can be used by some other consumer, but it again, the new material doesn't need to be used and that plays a major role. And finally, is the recycling. So all, all after all this cycle, so product product is repaired, then it is uh, reused, and then it is uh, refurbished. The last is recycled, and that is also a very very important uh, 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 component because because where the flow of the material is made possible back into the supply chain, 
and thereby significantly reducing the need to to extract the new material. So, for example, plastic PET bottles, or you take electronics item, if it is actually collected and recycled, again, it can be used back into the economy and you don't really need new fresh resources for this. So, by implementing these strategies, the relationship between the various stakeholders in the value chain will change for the better and the relationship will no longer be a dimensional and, st and stakeholders will interact at multiple times and that creates the opportunities for each of these loop to be created there is an opportunity uh, as a business support that's where we, we talk it about the trillion dollar opportunity all these angles uh, all these aspects plays a major role into it next slide so if you look at the market slide side uh, globally i think uh, uh, globally uh, by 2030 we expect the circular economy to be of 4.5 trillion dollars and if you largely divide into this opportunity into four parts, that is, one is first opportunity is substitute the wasted resources. So I think by introducing renewable energy, fully recyclable and bio bio based fuel, chemicals and materials. So this is the first and is one of the largest. That is one thousand seven hundred billion dollar opportunity across the globe. Second is monetize the wasted capacity. So for example, we are uh, we increase the co ownership, increase the renting. For example, furniture rental clothes rental, everything is now getting into the shared economy. So I think that something will be another big opportunity. There are many startups across India and the world trying to disrupt that. And that I think is going to play a major role in the coming, coming years. Some resources which we don't use regularly can be shared and monetized. So that is another six, $600 billion opportunity. Third one is lighten the waste life cycle, right? Basically lengthen the waste life cycle. So for example, um, resale, repair, and what we spoke about in the earlier slide are going to be major, major, major role. And there are many digital as well as offline players who are trying to bring that disruption into the into the market. And the last one is recover wasted uh, uh, values. That is something by recycling. And that, in, that is another big industry which is coming forward, increase recycling, have a proper technology for recycling, upcycling some components out of it, reuse some energy recovery. So all those aspects, if you look at all these four aspects, if you divide into four parts of the circular economy, globally it is a $4.5 trillion market as of now. Next slide. From uh, what I spoke about was from the global perspective. If you look at India, I think uh, 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 there are a couple of reports available and these are only specific to certain industries. These reports are not considered as every aspect of the of the consumption. So if you look at uh, Ellen Martinson Foundation's report, this, they say that it's a $624 billion opportunity by 2050. And they have just considered three major categories like uh, CND waste, that is infrastructure waste. Second is food and agriculture, what they have considered. And third one is mobility and vehicle manufacturing. So if you only do bring uh, circularity into these three uh, things, it's, it's going to be a almost $600 plus billion opportunity in India India itself. Fiji has done some research on few categories like agriculture, metal, and electronics. And as per them, by 2030, it is going to be a half a trillion USD opportunity. Although this doesn't cover plastic and many, many more other categories. So it's not a wider aspect. But even if you consider the smaller set of categories which they have focused on, I think in India also, it's more than a trillion dollar opportunity altogether. And it's, 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 it's something which need to be disrupted and need more entrepreneur really to focus on bringing that circularity, disrupt the whole supply chain and work on reverse logistics and make that happen. Next slide. So I think what are the challenges, right? When you look at the challenges uh, in, the, in the circularity uh, majorly, so one of the challenge, first challenge is, is the perception barrier. So as a consumer, we still don't want to uh, use the used products, right? We are still uh, want new product. There is a, there is a different feeling that uh, used is not good or something reused cannot be reused. But I think that perception has to, has, has to put, uh, purely changed. The second barrier is trade barriers. So the, Parts, the spare parts harvesting should be free flowing, right? Among countries, uh, because the, the demand and supply in each country might not be the same. 
and the free market for pre-owned products also can be one of the policy decision which the government has to make where the uh, pre-owned products can be imported or exported very very freely and that's something will help in bringing that circularity and uh, into the ecosystem the third one is the decision barriers i think this is majorly inside the organization and that is purely focusing and uh, talking about the implementing the clarity defined policy on pre-owned refurbished and recycled products so this is more internal decision making barriers which we see in every organization which we or all of us work for the fourth one and most important is spares and raw material availability i think this is one of the barrier so not having the robot component and raw material manufacturing and harvesting ecosystem in a country will lead generally to the shortage of the spares and raw material and that in turn there is a whole dependence of the on the single country for all these products so we are generally be dependent on some some countries for all kinds of product and uh, component requirement and has the negative implications so we need to strengthen the ecosystem within india itself where we can do uh, the encourage more reuse repair and refurbishing recycling and also the spare and raw material availability by manufacturing locally is something is a need of the hour i think these are the four major barriers and major challenges in circularity which we all need to um, pass next So, and what are the elements which are enabling circular? So, those were the barriers which we spoke about. These are the barriers in the overall industry. So, what are the elements and which are enabling circularity? So, let's talk about. There are four different aspects. There are many, but I just tried to cover four. So, one is government incentive schemes slash policies, right? So, I think that is that is going to play a major role because as a consumer, we are really not very conscious about the environment, about the overall things happening around us. But I think last two years, and this and there cannot be a better time than now because where the government can take these initiatives or policies because of pandemic. Now, every human being has realized that. he is nothing he is very small in the whole thing of world the nature is much much larger much bigger so this is the time when they have really understood the importance of the environment and and there is some soft corner around it so this is a perfect time for us to really uh, that feeling across the consumers can be really really used in a right direction so i i feel that the government should come up with many incentives slash policies so i will just give one example here and which can be from the india specific thing so we all know that plastic waste has been a big challenge for us for last so many years and plastic uh, 20 million metric tons of plastic waste gets generated in india until 2017 there was no one bothered about it and whatever municipal corporations were doing consumer awareness was almost next to nil and plastic was getting generated it was going to landfill it was going to going to ocean and it was polluting the environment across around us uh, most important that is one aspect from the environment but the second all this valuable material because there was so much of valuable material which can be used into the circular economy was going to landfills and ocean because there was no policy there was no responsibility thrown on anybody for this so the government has come up with a with a regulation or a policy around 4 years back for e waste and plastic these are the two categories they came up with called extended producer responsibility and uh, as per that the every brand who is creating a plastic footprint say unilever has used 100000 metric tons of plastic as a packaging uh, in their packaging or coke and pepsi has used pet bottles for selling their cold drinks so this policy has made them responsible to collect the waste x percentage so they have to collect 50% of the plastic footprint they have created in maharashtra 50% created in andaman nicobar so that policy came in naturally the producers became responsible for the waste they are generating it was not there till 2017 and we are seeing the drastic change in last 3 years where every producer is now thinking about bringing down the use of plastic number 1 number 2 converting non recyclable to the recyclable plastic third they are spending good amount of money in increasing the collection because that there is a mandate this is a compliance requirement otherwise they will not be able to sell their so suddenly 3000 5000 companies or uh, which are already adopted are, are spending good amount of money and 2 billion dollars 
on the large scale has come in the industry in the uh, waste management industry which earlier was not even focused not even no corporate bothered about it so the one policy change and i have seen last year almost 2 million uh, metric tons of plastic got collected because of epr and it got channelized to the right destination either cement factory for co processing or to the uh, to the recyclers who are registered with the pollution control board so i think one policy brought in so much of change and suddenly the plastic collection number has increased and quality of the plastic which got collected also has increased and in turn all these people the bottom of the pyramid guys who were putting all their energy doing all the dirty work of collection started getting more income and their lifestyle also has improved so just to give one example these kind of in this kind of policies and schemes and mandates are required from government to really make it uh, work second part of very important aspect is the inflow of funds so i think anything you want to do at scale anything all these uh, you want to bring uh, build a businesses around circular economy there is a lot of funding required because this business will take time to really build and scale so i think there is lot of funding uh, ecosystem available today and personally i have been in this space so i have seen in last couple of years that there is a huge interest from corporates many there are many impact companies there are many uh, many other uh, in uh, venture capitalists and even if you look at the uh, listed companies also the companies which are really focusing on circularity slash sdg goals are really getting the better value for their listing their, their value more 8 10% more than the other companies which are not doing it so the funding is available there are like cdc ifc there are so many impact funds i have personally met at least 20 25 in this country so there is enough of capital available what they need is a business model a good team of entrepreneurs who wanted to really do that disruption and because this is not easy to do it's it's very very tough because this this industry this whole circularity this whole reverse logistics is something new nobody has really disrupted at a scale before but at the same time that's what the entrepreneur has to right where there is no disruption where it is very informal he can come and disrupt so fund available is definitely are there and more more and more funding will definitely flow in uh, for this uh, for this purpose so funding is not a challenge i feel in the current current market but that will enable circularity so more and more funding coming in will uh, and i'm seeing the early signals of that already in the indian context if you look at the third is the innovative technology so i think it's not just about the entrepreneurs but the technology the innovation is required there i, I saw that like what we have been doing in recycle i will talk on the last slide how uh, how we are actually bringing technology into circularity but then there are so many other aspects of uh, all we spoke about the reuse refurbishing recycling each of these aspects needs innovation needs better technology to extract maximum value out of out of the uh, used products or make them refurbished quickly and make them almost looks like new so there can be a innovation across not just the supply chain but even on the product Re refurbishing, reuse, all those aspects re require technology to be really brought in. There are technologies available, but more more technology coming in that will enable the circular uh, that this element will enable the circular economy. The fourth point which I would like to talk about is growth of. uh supplementary industries like for example logistics because i i specifically is talking about uh logistics warehousing because the reverse logistics for the circular economy one of the in, very important component is the uh is the reverse logistics because that's something which has really not got disrupted yet at a scale forward logistics we have seen in india itself in last 6 uh, 7 8 years delivery um, e-com express so there are at least 10 15 companies which have really reached that billion dollar number doing few million uh, deliveries uh, uh, with the proper planning so the, the forward logistic already got disrupted that is adoption there but the reverse logistic is something is still not reached that stage because the whole adoption of circular economy itself is in the early stage but i think that something is required to be growing that is going to enable better reverse logistic ecosystem availability will make the uh, will enable the circularity in much much better way because the biggest cost and biggest risk associated with the with the circular economy to really be economically viable is the reverse logistics and i think that's something which in next couple of years we'll see drastic change happening into that next slide thank you 
so uh, uh, so i will so as, as i explained earlier that uh, the space uh, for circularity that i cross we disturb that 4.5 billion uh, trillion opportunity in india uh, so every every aspect of it has a scope of circularity i uh, personally run a startup which is like called recycle and uh, i founded it in 2015 and the whole objective of recycle was to really disrupt the supply chain and bring circularity into the waste and a particular major focus for first 3 4 years for us was around plastic first and then e waste so i will just talk about it for 5 7 minutes how we are able to um, bring that change and circularity into the into the system so when you talk about the waste management and particularly this has been there for last 60 70 years and uh, uh, just to set the context uh, in india there are at least um, uh, at least 60 million uh, people uh, who, uh, almost 3% of indian population sorry 3% of indian population gets food every day because someone in their family is working in the waste management that is from collection to recycling and uh, uh, as i explained a uh, couple of uh, minutes back that the epr regulation which has come in the country uh, in 2017 actually has brought lot of change in the waste management because the waste management earlier was completely a informal way of doing it, it was a cash economy although it is very large it's 100 billion dollar market in india but completely informally driven completely cash economy and there is no uh, technology no formalization was available there but as soon as the epr came in because the epr demands the traceability visibility of the material flow all the gst billing everything became mandatory that has actually started changing the way people are starting transacting on the west bro there is nothing called west in this country right and i, I thought we are talking about circularity so everything is a resource for somebody it's not at all west even the lace packet which you throw on the road actually can be used for, for the is is used by the cement factories as a replacement of coal for energy generation so that's the circularity we are talking about the plastic bottle after consuming drinks we just throw it that has been re- gets recycled multiple times so what we thought because all the stakeholders uh, across the ecosystem were completely fragmented so there was no no connectivity between them uh, the uh, the rag pickers were at the bottom of the pyramid those are 4 million rag pickers then there were 1000 2000 recyclers across uh, plastic and e waste and there were uh, aggregators so there are five six by the time the plastic bottle goes from your house it reaches to the recycler it changes six hands so it's a long chain of the middleman so what we thought can we really bring this uh, uh, disruption using internet using mobile and that's how we started recycle we one line somebody asked me what's uh, what what is uh, recycle we generally say that it's over for trash basically it's over for trash where we connect the uh, the gener- the collect generator as well as the first level of collector of the waste with the recycler directly so what happens with that because we get currently the biggest challenge with waste is that there is no data availability and because all the transactions all the supply of the waste is happening through our system uh, we are able to trace that from the x person's house why uh, why kg of plastic has been dispatched and this complete traceability we could bring in into the ecosystem so this is a integrated platform which connects all the stakeholders in the value chain and uh, in turn that brings that consumer awareness about and we in turn do the consumer awareness about the segregation using digital technologies and uh, uh, what what is the value of the material so we bring that awareness into that so majorly if you look at uh, we enable more financial value to all the stakeholders because we remove certain middlemen which are really not getting adding any value into the ecosystem and give the best of the value to the people who are doing the actual ground work we bring uh, the because of our intervention we have seen better and higher waste collection and i think that has been already predominant we have been seeing that and uh, uh, because the collection is more and we incentivize the quality of the the quality of the material collected is better then it is basically uh, it gets the collector gets more incentive out of it so that's that's makes that the quality of the material collected is better and naturally the if the quality of the material is better the recycling out, uh, outcome is also much much better and uh, and the outcome of this recycled material also is better so that it comes into the re- uh, economy so uh, in this process what we what we bring is end to end traceability and transparency we uh, the market linkage between the generators and the collectors with the recyclers 
and uh, this digitization of collection centers also what we do so in india we have thousands of collection centers which are run by the ngos so we have provided them a cloud based technology where they can completely trace the inflow and outflow of the waste and in turn get the visibility of the data and then connect it to the marketplace and we have also created the ai and machine learning based uh, tools where we can really do the segregation level assessment of each household and so for example each household is given a bag with a qr code and all the material collected from them when it comes to the conveyor belt we that photograph is taken and uh, we actually analyze that uh, how best the segregation at his place and if he has done a best segregation say 8 or 9 out of 10 he gets incentives for that and if it is below 5 then the municipal corporation puts penalty on that so we are just trying to do that from the generator to the to the to the um, recycler we are trying to bring the complete traceability and over and above we have the epr uh, platform which basically uh, where all these brands need to collect so they are also a part of our ecosystem so currently we are working with almost 135 brands across country and uh, we are working with 1000 bulk generator around 3000 uh, rack pickers particularly ma- major focus on hyderabad and pune and uh, around 150 recyclers we are channelizing almost 20000 metric tons of plastic and e waste every month so it was just 800 metric ton a year back uh, it is now 20000 metric ton and by this year end by march per month will be at least around 50000 metric tons of waste getting channelized so our vision is by 2025 we would like to channelize 3 million metric tons of waste through our platform and it gets to the places where it should go not the landfill and not the so it gets into the recycler who then recycles it produces the granules and then it comes back into the economy and just to highlight one more point because from the generator till the recycler is one loop then the recycler now uh, just uh, the government uh, few governments globally has already implemented that every brand in their packaging or in their new products has to use 20% of uh, recycled uh, material to produce they, they can't use all the virgin material for the packaging for even as well as for plastic uh, it has been in made mandatory in the europe and i think government of india is also in a process so if all goes well in next 30 days we might have that uh, circular coming out where they are going to mandate every brand to use a certain percentage of recycled plastic into their packaging and that i think is going to make that complete process circular because you are uh, 20% of uh, granules you are using from the recycled material itself enables more demand for the material more incentives for the collection ecosystem and that will bring that whole circularity into the in, into the ecosystem So this is what I wanted to present today, and uh, you know, open for questions and any 